awoke before my alarm, which I would normally be like, pat on the back, that's so good. Oh, what time was my alarm set for? That's such a good question. 1.45 in the morning. So I think the answer is really more, did you sleep? Which like, you know when you have to go to an airport and you're like kind of not asleep, you're like listening in your sleepness, like just like no good sleep, no productive sleep being done because you're scared your alarm's not gonna go off, you're gonna miss your flight, you're just like stressed about something. That's how I was all last night. I went to bed at 8 p.m. I don't think I ever slept, which is the worst. <laughs> Also way that I could start this video and now I have to stay up for 24 hours. I was supposed to film this yesterday That was my plan. So I went to bed got my little butt to bed at 7 p.m 7 p.m Two nights in a row like a toddler. I love that for me And I woke up and I was like, oh my my alarm has not gone off yet I can keep sleeping. I hope it's like at least one like I can get like a good good hour now Five o'clock in the morning and I scroll through my notifications and I get like a notification That's as small as a text. That's like alarm Three hours ago, sorry. You clearly know if you're looking at the title of this anywhere, I have the memory of a goldfish because I must. That's the only, only answer. I must have the memory of a goldfish if I am attempting to do this again because I did this what? Last month? Hell, hell on earth. So hard. I was in the most depressive mood the next few days after that lack of sleep. However, I hate to fail. And like I said, you know how women forget the pain of childbirth so that they give childbirth again? Like it's something your brain does. I feel like that, that that's something that my brain was programmed to do with 24 hour reading challenges. Obviously to a lesser scale, obviously. However, memory of a goldfish, that must be the only answer if I'm attempting this again. We are going to attempt to read for 24 hours straight. Caveat, attempt. Keyword attempt. I'm competitive. I'm gonna try really damn hard because the truth is I'm not gonna not try again if I fail again. So let's just not fail, okay? I'm looking at me, let's just not fail. Two, if I need a break, I'm gonna take one. You know when you're smelling perfume and you're like, oh my God, I love that scent, but I need coffee beans. Why did I word that like that? Me, like I'm already tired. You know when you're smelling perfumes and you do like coffee bean smells to, to like cleanse your palate? I needed that last time, I really did. So if I like wanna get up and go make a coffee, not listening to an audiobook, if I wanna get up and take my dog on like a 10, 20 minute walk, I'm gonna do that. It's really just how much can I read in 24 hours straight? I thought this would be so much easier than it was the first time around and it slapped me. So we'll see how it goes this time. I was talking to Gabby about her her attempting this video after I first attempted mine and she was attempting to do two to two and I watched her video and it did make way more sense you're missing technically half a night on both ends and I normally stay up till two so like it's just an really early morning I feel like I can stay up till two it's a lot more feasible than trying to stay up to six in the morning a big problem that I had last time was that I didn't want to read anything like nothing was catching my eye but I did do a massive book haul and book buying a lot recently it's a problem so I'm taking my credit card away I get it I have a lot more that I want to read now I was initially thinking that I would start with Ricochet, which is Addicted to You, part two. No, it's not. It's the second book in the Addicted Calloway Sister series. It's a novella. It's only 280 pages. So I was like, that's such a good book to start with because it'll make me feel motivated when I finish it. However, I asked you guys on TikTok yesterday what you think I should read. And there was an overwhelming number of comments that were like, you're going to want to quit if you read that book because it's so boring. It's the worst one in the series. That feels like the wrong choice. Now, with the one brain cell that is already alone rattling up in there, I have no idea what to pick up. I really want to pick up a seven year slip. I think that if I read it first, I'll be able to digest it because some people are saying like, you got to save it, babe. And you to really get in there and digest it. It's so good. But what if I just read it first? And if it's so good, won't it make me want to continue? Like this has to be straight delusion. This has to be straight delusion. An alarm set for 1.45 a.m. so that I can read for 24 hours straight. I will be telling my grandchildren that I was that crazy. It is 2 a.m. on the dot literally right now. We're gonna start this alarm, this timer, and we're just gonna, we're gonna get into it. exceptionally poetic and beautiful or if it's the Taylor Swift on the seven-year slip playlist that is already playing or it could be the fact that I'm already delusionally tired all totally valid reasons the writing in this is already I feel prickles in my eyes like I already feel like I'm gonna cry the way that she is describing things in this and describing people and feelings in this ten pages in I'm already emotional <laughs> It has to be that I'm tired, right? It has to be. It has to be. Or is this going to destroy me?
time is currently 5 10 in the morning which means that i've been reading for just over three hours definitely reading very slow i think i'm just over 100 pages in 120 on the dot and i feel like i am i am really fighting battling sleep not because of this book but because crying always makes me so goddamn tired and this book is making me cry so much honestly sometimes i get very i don't know if self-conscious is the right word but like self-aware of how maybe weird it is how emotionally invested and how big i feel things reading books like sometimes i feel like i'm a crazy person like what is wrong with my brain that these fictional characters and like these made-up words are like leaving such an imprint on me and then when i take a step back i'm always like that is why i love this so much that is why i feel so grateful to be able to do this as much as i'm doing it of course there's bad books in the world and of course there's books that i like meh don't really do anything for me but finding books like this that make me feel feelings that this book and a lot of others have made me feel just feels like such a snapshot in time it's also why i love annotating so much because i feel like i can look back in moments and like remember what i was feeling or like what i thought in the moment and like what they meant to me in the moment i'm rambling truth be told I'm obsessed with this book. Writing style is so poetic and beautiful. It feels to me kind of, it's giving me the same feelings as Into the Dark Magnolia Parks gave me, where it feels so real, but like larger than life. Obviously in very different ways because with Magnolia Parks, you're getting like a very larger than life existence with all of this money and all of this drama, but really real raw human emotions and especially in Into the Dark. Whereas with this, we get a very unrealistic magical apartment, but everything else about it is so human. We are following Clementine, who is such a like main character can i just get that out of the way we are so in her head with her and the way that she speaks about things in her own head and is like processing her own emotions and grief beautifully done clementine has always been very close with her aunt and they always traveled the world together but she traveled the world with her aunt to be with her aunt not because she was this huge crazy wild child she loves her routine but her aunt has now passed away and she has inherited this apartment from her aunt this apartment that she was like so desperately trying to not move into because of how much it hurt her heart but she can't afford to live in the apartment that she was living in anymore because her rent increased and she had to move and we're slowly hearing these stories of how seven year slips happen and you will go back or forward in time seven years and you will see someone in that apartment because the apartment is magical and it was a story that clementine always clung on to she heard it for the first time when she was like eight years old she clung so hard onto it she knew now that it wasn't real until maybe it is maybe it's true and she's now slipping seven years in time where she is meeting iwan i don't totally know i don't even know how i'm saying it in my head iwan iwan awan that name and he has just moved to new york his mother is really good friend with her aunt so he was subletting the apartment for the summer and because it's seven years ago in his time zone in his time period it is clementine and her aunt on their very first trip ever there's something so la la land about it like you know how it's like so romanticized for lack of a better word like i feel like the little nuances and the little things that her aunt keeps reminding her chase the moon find a job that gives you passion fall in love if you're lost in a city you call your home be a tourist just so many little isms and little comments that just like in writing feel so romantic i feel very lost in this story i'm like gonna cry it's like 50 percent because i'm loving this so much i'm so glad that i picked this up first and partially because i'm fucking exhausted all in all amazing reading experience if there is anything that you can learn about me from watching any of my videos it is that i love to cry and i love to feel emotion this is like my bread and butter books that make me just feel like melancholic oh my god i want to like give my mom a hug or like i want to i need to buy my best friend flowers for no reason because that's how i want to make people feel how this book makes me feel it makes me happy See, like, that, maybe there's something wrong with my head. Maybe I am too emotional, but who am I hurting? So, that's fine. <laughs>
to everyone who told me to read this, I love you and I'm so mad at you. <laughs> Eight hours and 15 minutes in. Not my quickest reading of a book ever, but I'm gonna need a minute, just like a minute to collect. If you read The Seven Year Slip, please read the reader's guide, read the author's note. Okay, I just need a sec. The Seven Year Slip. Oh my God, wait, I love your glasses. Ah, thank you. Let me tell you about them. Huge thank you to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring this video. If you guys have literally ever seen a video on my channel in the history of time ever, then you have seen some variation of these glasses on my face before. Because even though I like to pretend that I don't need glasses to read, I do. I definitely do. And these glasses are so good that not only do I have them, my mom, my dad, my aunt, my best friend, my roommate, and my boyfriend all have them. I got the whole family hooked on them, okay? And there's a reason that I love them so much. Basically how it works is you go on the website and you can pick like a base frame, which by the way, you can try them on on the website with a virtual try on from the comfort of your own bed. You know what you can't do from the comfort of your own bed? Go out in public and try glasses on. You can't do that in the comfort of your own bed. Being able to do anything from the comfort of your own bed, but especially trying on something that is gonna be on your face all the time and you really want to look good, it's the best thing ever. They have a bunch of base frames for you to choose between, a bunch of base colors for you to choose between, but really what makes pair my favorite thing in the entire world is not only can you get one pair of glasses, you can get multiple pairs of glasses. You heard that right. You can also get sunglasses. I quite literally have a top frame for every single situation, every single outfit that you could think of I have a top frame for because there's nothing better than making your glasses functional and it makes you want to wear them more. You knew I had to get a red to match the hair. So whether you're looking for a new, very functional prescription pair of glasses or even just blue light blockers, pairs got you covered and they've got you covered fashionably. And you guys can even use Madison K15 to get 15% off of their website. I literally love these glasses so much. I cannot put it into words. Hair, I love you. You make my life so much better. And on that note, Let's go read some books. I am gonna leave all of my like official ratings and reviews at the very end of the video. I feel like I've realized that if I rate things in the moment, I always end up regretting them. Like I feel like I need to sit on and think on my ratings. I mean, it's not that serious, but I feel like I have to. However, I will give quick thoughts. My initial thought when I put this down was to pick up a camera and go, oh my God, this is definitely one of my new favorite books ever. And then I always get this like sneaking feeling in the back of my head where I'm like, you need to stop calling so many books your favorite book. You need to stop being such like a quote unquote easy writer because you guys aren't going to trust my opinions as much if I'm loving so many books but if a book makes me feel the way that this book made me feel like it's it's a favorite book it is a favorite book I would be shocked if I woke up tomorrow morning and thought this was anything less than five stars the story the writing the relationship the talks of grief everything in this like executed to perfection at least in my opinion I was sobbing sobbing at three in the morning at three in the goddamn morning this is beautiful. I'm still like fairly new to reading if we're totally transparent. I haven't been reading a hundred books in a year for years and years and years. In terms of the book space and what books are popular, I'm still like relatively new and I'm still getting recommendations from book talkers and booktubers and myself all the time. Hence why I feel like I get so many good books. I feel like I know who has very similar tastes to me at this point and that is where I get so many of my recommendations. And I feel like me and you have very similar tastes and you guys give me such good recommendations that I read so many amazing books. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's definitely a lot of really bad ones or like ones that are not for me. I feel like I still have so many like popular, like renowned, really well-loved books to read, which I feel like is why I am giving so many books amazing ratings, but I would be shocked if this turned out not to be a five star. Across the board, beautiful. Like I couldn't have annotated more of this. It took me so long to get through it. If we're looking at my last 24 hour video, I read all of Love Redesigned, which was like 540 pages in seven and a half hours. And I read this 320 page book in like over eight hours, which is like a drastic time difference. But I was annotating so much of this. I was like putting it down and digesting and like sobbing <laughs> to this. I've already called my mother. She said that I was an adorable little bean because I was sobbing to her about how I felt about a book. She gets it, she reads too. Every time she sees it, she's still like, it's like, my little baby girl but i told her the first thing that i'm gonna do when i go home tomorrow is give this to her and i'm gonna give her a pen and i want her to annotate what she feels like she wants to annotate in this as well this was beautiful like so so well done and i feel like now i'm gonna go down the pipeline where i'm like now i need to read the dead romantics and then i'm not gonna like it as much because it seems like everybody does not like the dead romantics as much but they want more ashley Poston, so they read it and then they're disappointed so i feel like that's just in my destiny i'm gonna go down that rabbit hole as well because no one was lying i haven't cried and like felt in a standalone i don't think ever but like in a book in general since Into the Dark and before that 
I don't know a book that's made me cry this much. It is 11 a.m. now. Been up since two in the morning. Oh my God, what is going on? I will say so far this time is working out way better because I did really have a period where I was really, really freaking tired. Tears always make me really tired. I don't know if that's just me, but I finished the book. I got up, I walked chance. It took a minute. I needed that minute. I really did. And I put a little bit of makeup on. I changed my outfit so that when I'm getting closer to the end, I can put pajamas on again. But if I'm not in pajamas, I won't be tired. That being said, I'm at three brain cells total like realistically if we're so fucking honest and it's only going downhill from here the two books that i really have on my hit list that i really think i want to read today are a dowry of blood and the naturals very different vibes i know for a fact that there is no world that i can go into any contemporary modern any semblance of a strict romance right now after that because i will be comparing it and like a fluffy little romance it's just it's not gonna live up to that i'm kind of thinking that i should pick up the dowry of blood so many of the comments on tiktok you guys told me to read this like at my 19 hour mark because i'll I'll be able to like still get through this and digest it and it's like a quick fast paced read but it's not like overly overwhelming with information this one would be easier to digest when i have one singular brain cell rattling around up there but while i still have a couple of brain cells i feel like this is the one that i need to go into all that i know about this is that it's about dracula's first wife i have no idea the writing style i have no idea the era i have no idea what genre i don't know anything i just remember it being recommended to me and i don't even remember the reviews that made me want to read it however it's right here in my hands and i'm intrigued and i've decided that i want to read it i set my mind to it a couple days ago that it was going to be in this video i don't know why and now it's just like subconsciously in the back of my mind really manifesting <laughs> that it's different enough that it'll keep my attention because starting with that is like going out of the gate swinging if it weren't any other day obviously if i were not filming a 24 hour challenge i would not read an entire book and then another book in that day if it were any other day i would like really take the time to digest that it was so good just about to hit the halfway mark and i am like just over halfway through this i don't know i have no idea i feel like i went in having no idea what it was about and now i'm like 150 pages of 280 so like more than halfway through it and i still like don't totally get the point you're gonna eat breakfast right now right there okay i feel like i honestly kind of have less of an idea what this is being halfway in i don't know if it's just not for me it's not bad don't hear me i was just, i keep don't hear me out don't hear me out you don't have to it's your prerogative we're dwindling down on brain cells there's only one or two banging around up there now i just think it's maybe not my cup of tea it's basically i don't even want to call it a diary because the whole thing in the beginning is that it's very matter of fact it's kind of like an emotional memoir the story of constanta 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 who is assumingly dracula's first wife i think it says it in the preamble it says it somewhere seeing that it is a dracula story but she won't call him by his name in this it's just my lord my liege that kind of vibe really really beautiful writing don't get me wrong the writing is really beautiful it's poetic it's like very easy to read it's fine i don't know we'll see we're at exactly the halfway point i realized i was reading very slow i am getting tired I'm not gonna lie to anyone that's a red bull right there hoping it revives me like it's good i'm honestly kind of at a loss for words i have no idea what i why why we'll see <laughs> I just kind of I feel like I missed the bit on this one. I really, I feel like I missed the bit. Like maybe it is truly the fact that I am at the point in this where I have one singular brain cell rattling around and I just like wasn't in a headspace to absorb something of like higher philosophical meaning maybe is what I want to go with. I don't know if it was the writing style. I don't know if it was the story style. I don't know what it was about this. I feel absolutely nothing for these characters, which is so, I connect the characters so easily. I feel 
it was just sad like the seven year slip heartbreaking but i was so connected to the characters i felt like emotional for them this was kind of like reading a newspaper like i feel like i wasn't connected to the characters like i didn't feel like i personally knew them it just felt like very removed from me like don't get me wrong very sad but just very removed from me a dowry of blood is a retelling of dracula's brides through the literary device of letters that constanta his first bride is writing to him explaining why she made the decision to kill kill him. Her story of being with him for eternity, many, many hundreds of years, and the emotional abuse that she went through and that the other brides went through. This didn't feel like a vampire story. It felt like a heartbreaking memoir through the lens of a very abused vampire who happened to live hundreds and hundreds of years with her abuser. Like I understand the message of this. I just didn't feel connected to it at all. I hate talking poorly about books. Like I understand why people would love this. I understand that the writing was very beautiful and that it was well executed. I just didn't connect to it at all. It felt to me like I was reading something for school. It's not bad. I'm not saying it is bad in any way, shape or form. I just don't think it was for me. Like it made me feel sad, but like not because I felt attached to them, but just like overall sad. Like it didn't make me want to cry for them. It made me depressed. I feel like I really might've missed the bit on this one. Like if this is your favorite book ever, let me know why. I'm really curious. Cause I feel like I missed something about this. Cause it just did not resonate with me at all. I hate, I hate saying that. It feels like a fever dream. I have, I have no recollection of what I just read. Like nothing about it stuck with me. Like I just felt like I was reading words on paper. Like I didn't feel connected to it at all. On another no, we are almost 14 hours into this which means I have 10 hours left that feels like not a lot of time but also so much I think two to two was the right choice I'm debating between these two now because I definitely want to go into the naturals but I also just got swift and saddled by Lila Sage in the mail and I read down and dusted last week and I feel like very in this world and I'm excited to read about their story but I also really want to go into this I'm very conflicted on what I think I should do I feel like with the amount of time I have left I'm gonna do like 1.75 they're both like right on the dot 300 pages for the most part how long is this one? Oh my god it's 300 on the dot and I think this one's also 300 on the dot I'm gonna take like five minutes to like cleanse my palette a little bit I really I want to love it I really want to love it and I'm kicking myself for having not connected to it like maybe if I read it at a different time I would have connected to it I just like I feel like I'm in the wrong for not having connected to it I'll be back we'll see which one I decide with and then we'll continue on with the second half of our day we're making pretty good progress I'm not like exhausted so that's good just moving to literally every single corner in my room to just not get bored. Welcome to a new corner. I just walked to the convenience store like around the corner from my house because I really wanted chips because you're right, not dinner. Chips are not dinner. However, the idea of cooking at dinner right now, absolutely, absolutely freaking not. Not happening right now. So for now, chips are gonna be kind of classified as dinner. I digress. While I was walking there, I saw this little girl in a stroller. She was so cute. And she waved at a bus and nobody on the bus saw her and she started crying. And then someone on the street saw her crying and waved at her and the unbridled, adorable, biggest most genuine smile ever I've ever seen on a human ever came across her face I needed that today okay life into perspective there are so many more important things than me liking every single book that I read or me having the same book taste as everyone it's okay that a dowry of blood was not for me I see the message I get the message it's just not what I look for when I'm reading the naturals I am like quite a little bit in I'm like 68 pages in it's honestly such a quick easy read nobody was lying in any way shape or form this was a very good book to pick up as being like not my first book in reading for 24 hours straight so far, we are only in Cassie's perspective. I don't know if we're going to get other perspectives moving forward. It is about a program called The Naturals hence the title, that is basically like trying to train young teenage aged kids who have proclivities for things the FBI would want. Because if they keep growing up in society, they go to regular university and stuff, this FBI program believes it'll like limit their abilities and they want to train the naturals to like be as good as possible to solve cold cases. Casey's mom was very brutally murdered five years ago and she really wants to solve the case, which is like her motive for agreeing to be a part of this. She just got to the house and she's like meeting everybody outside of Quantico now. It's very good so far. I'm very intrigued. There's some really weird isms in here like in some parts it's definitely giving very much YA which you guys know I'm not always a huge fan of YA however so far I'm really enjoying it I'm trying to find the weird thing that she said that I was like I what 
I wanted to shut myself in my room, collapse in my bed, and figure out what Hello Kitty had happened that afternoon. It's weird. Apart from that, enjoying it a lot. Like, I can't believe I've read 68 pages of this. Like, in A Diary of Blood that I just read, the pages were, like, this big. I swear, like, the biggest font ever. And I feel like it was taking me so long to get through it versus I'm, like, very into this story. And it's taking me, like, no time to get to here. So, we're gonna keep reading The Naturals. It's gonna get dark soon, and then I'm gonna get tired. This is the point in the video where I'm gonna start to get whiny, and I hate to break it to you. I'm really scared to edit this because I really feel like I have absolutely zero personality like I'm already I've been tired I've been tired also at the end of quite literally almost every single chapter such a horrific sentence at the end of a lot of the chapters you're getting this like you header you can't see it at all at the end of some of the chapters you're getting these like you messages they're messages that like I think you're supposed to assume are from a killer that they're like gonna end up replying from what I gathered like throughout the four books and the novella at the end in the series it does follow like one big case there's like one big thing intertwining everything Together, kind of giving criminal minds where they were like where they like overlapped, which we love. I'm such a true crime person, I love solving things. This feels like a YA version of the Mindfuck series. Also, I like that we're getting like some context like right from the very beginning. That there's some case, there's some guy, there's some murderer here, serial killer, has it out for these kids, and that is gonna be connected to. It adds like a little something to the plot. It's keeping me going like right out of the gate. Instead of it just being like us being introduced to the characters, we're being introduced to the characters and like who they're gonna be and what, and what their natural ad thing is, but we're getting the cases like right out of the gate which if you're a true crime girl I really feel like you'd love that <laughs> shelves for an embarrassing amount of trying ah! embarrassing amount of time trying to decide what to read next i have quite literally no ideas where i should go for me <laughs> the naturals by jennifer lynn barnes this is my very first jennifer lynn barnes ever and i'm so pleasantly surprised i still feel like i have no desire to read the inheritance game i feel like i'm good to not right i don't know however this was so good ya though it's kind of graphic like i enjoyed this as much as i enjoy my true crime podcast this was so good i guess some of the twists i write like little notes in thrillers you definitely can't tell when i think that they're like clues i guess some of them right the twists that i did guess right twisted harder than I could have anticipated. Really well done. And no one was lying. This was the quickest. Don't get the time confused because this was the most breaks that I took. I definitely took some like staring at the wall, prolonged breaks, and I definitely looked at my phone. Yeah, I'm like, I'm burning out. What do you, what do you expect from me? I'm just like holding on at this point. This is the fastest to read without a shadow of a doubt. And it was not the shortest. I'm very much so thinking of just going into the killer instinct now. So I feel like I'm in this world. Um, The font, so much smaller, so much smaller. Kind of feels discouraging. I have like four and a bit hours left four and some change. I don't know why I just said that we're at 19 hours and 15 minutes I'm not like that burnt out. That's I mean I am but like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do I have the confidence that I had six hours in last time But then also part of me is like just read swift and saddle because it's like such an easy quick 280 pages like I actually might finish it in the time but like really a four-hour sprint if I don't buckle down Can I not read can I read 400 pages in an hour? The math is not mathing. This is my thought process. I mean, at this point, you can't do anything about it. I'll have already decided I could actually finish this in the four hours. I really could, 280 pages. And then this is 340 pages. If it was this font, for freaking sure. Just for reference, okay? This is the one we just read. This is the next one. Is it the exact same font? I literally stood on my bookshelves for like 10 minutes being like, there's no way that I can finish this. It's the exact same font. It's the exact same font. It is, right? Why over there in less lighting did it look dramatically smaller? Okay, we're gonna do the Killer Instinct then. I feel like this video is just tons of dramatic pauses, but I'm not dramatic pausing. I'm just really that last brain cell rattling up in there trying to get anything done. Getting into bed at the end of this is, without a doubt, categorically the wrong choice. However, we're keeping the jeans on, so I won't be that comfortable. And I'm not getting under the covers, I'm bringing a blanket to me. So it's not like really bad. I won't get that tired.
seriousness, I feel like I'm the one that's most shocked that we made it here. You can't see my clock. That we made it here to two in the morning. I did the 24 hours. I did it. I will say, since I last talked to you, not tons of progress. A lot of staring at the wall and like willing my eyes to stay open. Not tons of progress. Killer Instinct, however, is already better than the naturals. Like I already feel like we're getting so much more found families. I'm gonna go to bed and we can talk about this in the morning. How does that sound? I feel like my eyeballs aren't working. That last brain cell, we're putting her to sleep. Okay, good morning. We are back. It is the next day now. The reviews, the ratings are in. I've had some time to sit on and think about these or not think about some of them at all. So it is time to recap the 24 hours because you know what? You know what we did? We freaking did it. I did it 24 hours straight. I will not lie to absolutely anybody involved. 1 a.m. really hanging on by a thread. I really, I kept picking up my phone because you know how your phone light wakes you up. So I do like five minutes staring at my phone and then five minutes reading. I feel like really if we crunched it down, I could have finished the fourth book in that four hours. I was reading at a snail's pace, which gave me the thought. I'm kind of thinking, let me know if you guys think this is a good idea or not. I'm thinking of doing and actually reading for 24 hours because I've read about the same in the last 24 hour span and like, let's be freaking real. Brain power, desolate, not much going on. So I'm kind of curious to see how much I actually can read in 24 hours. Setting alarm for 24 hours. Every time I sit down to read, get the alarm, like read for a total of 24 hours and see how much the number changes because I know that when I'm tired, I'm reading at a snail's pace. And I'm so curious to see like how fast I actually read in 24 hours, minus 24 hours. The numbers are in. We read a total of 1,109 pages in the 24 hours, which is so many pages. It's incomparable to me that I flipped the page 1,109 times yesterday. We're gonna do some ratings, we're gonna do some reviews, starting with The Seven Year Slip, the book that started it all. You guys, I said yesterday, there's no world. I would be so surprised if I woke up in the morning and it wasn't a five star read. It's six stars. It's a six star read. It is, I wanna go so far to say it's like top three, four reads of my entire life. This is, I want to reread it like right now, like today. I can't imagine having started with a better book. Like I was definitely reading it slow because if you were wondering, I annotated every other page in this. I literally went online this morning and was like, I wonder if I can find the Fairy Loot edition. I couldn't, I couldn't for less than $400, not happening. I thought about it. This is my new favorite standalone of all time. Like, and I think I can say that confidently. Nothing is coming to mind that even remotely close to how this made me feel. This had the perfect execution of storyline, beautiful writing, beautiful characters, emotions, everything. The story in this book, I was crying in the beginning from how beautiful the writing was. And I was like, I'm just tired. And like, I'm an extremely sentimental, emotional person and just the things that her aunt would say about like how beautiful life is and how you have to and like what happened six star read without a doubt i am like stopping myself from calling ash up and getting a tattoo for this like i don't even i like it changed my life this book changed my life i will never be the same i'm going home to visit my mom because it's my mom's birthday today say happy birthday to my mom it won't be my mom's birthday today when you're watching this but it is right now today and i'm bringing her this and i'm bringing her a pen and i'm making her annotate it i feel thanks to these characters that i haven't even felt for series that i love on the fifth book this book made me feel things i cannot put into words i could cry thinking about it feels like it was 172 000 pages long in that I am like so emotionally connected and emotionally care about these characters. I don't know how she did it. I really, I don't know how she did it. I will be going down the now reading the Dead Romantics pipeline and I can't imagine anything would ever even remotely compare to this. Needs to be framed. Everybody that told me to read this, please and thank you. Go buy yourself a special little treat because you deserve it. You changed my life. And if you have not read this yet and you have like any inkling that there is a world that you would like it, I feel like the descriptions that I heard about it, the stuff that I heard about it, like the way that people summarized it, probably the way that I even summarized it. It's like, yeah, okay, like maybe. I like knew I was gonna and eventually read it I like never really went out and bought it and then there was one day I got this comment which miss girl you are 100% the reason that I read this I did buy it when I said I bought it like right when I saw your comment and I have seen you commenting on my videos since then being like really read it you're gonna love it I owe you my life but I was not totally sold on like the whole concept of it I was just kind of like yeah like sometimes you hear a concept and you're like okay whatever this is the book that I'm telling you right now I'm telling you right now it is so good don't miss it you know when you like are like oh my god I was gonna read that book forever and then you read it and it's five stars and you're like why did I wait so long don't wait please don't wait on a different note a Dowry of Blood. I've given this a lot of thought because I hate not liking books and I hate that it was in this video and because usually if I don't like a book, I can make the executive decision like I understand why other people like it and I don't want to put it in this video because I don't really have anything positive to say, but I obviously can't in this video because I was reading for 24 hours straight. This isn't at all what I was expecting, I think is the big, the big kicker here. I feel like I was going in expecting a vampire story like The Serpent in the Wings of the Night, which this is moments that it's totally my fault going in blind. Gives me poetry vibe. There was no world building. There was really not a ton of character building. And I feel like the whole story was emotional and you're like supposed to be really connected to the characters and like their trauma. And I feel like just reading about trauma without being like connected to them, there's trauma in this. However, these characters all have dreams about them because they're real people to me. I don't even 
even remember the names in this. I think that there are very specific subsect of readers that would love this. Like if you read for prose and you read for beautiful quotes and like that enough for you, you would love this. Like I can't read poetry. I find it insanely boring. I just like feel nothing about it. Whereas I really value beautiful writing in books that I'm very connected to. I just wasn't connected to this in any way, shape or form. If I'm honest, for me, it's like a two stars. I think I'm going to give it a three on Goodreads because it is really beautifully written. Like I can respect how beautifully written it is. I don't think I'll ever think about it again. It was really short. I feel like I don't know what I read and maybe this is not the time to read it. I just feel like I had no context to care. Very, very well done depiction of how a manipulative, abusive partner gains control while also it does not romanticize it. Definitely wasn't for me. I feel a type of way about saying that it wasn't for me. I hate not liking books. I always feel like the villain. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to stop talking about it. It wasn't for me. The Naturals and Killer Instinct. I got like just over halfway through Killer Killer. I got just halfway through Killer Instinct. I'm like 183 pages of 340. That's more than halfway. Is that exactly halfway? No, 170 is exactly halfway. I don't have a math degree. This is really good. This is really interesting. This is really fun. If you love true crime, I think this is really fun. I feel like I've never really found this in books other than in here. Like I love the whole concept of like FBI profiling, the whole concept of like going through a crime and solving it. And I find with thrillers, you're like with the characters in the story, you know, like you're, you're in the crime versus this, you definitely get that. Do not get me wrong. The stories are so interconnected to the children. Are they children? They're like 17 and 18. To the kids. Is kids different than children? To the kids in the naturals program. Like the stories are very connected to them. They've had very like well developed traumatic histories, which is why they've developed these natural skills because they've grown up in situations that they had to develop them. The backgrounds and the stories of the characters is so well plotted, but also you're getting like this really cool profiling and like look at the FBI. I love true crime. So like this, this is so fun for me. You get to like try and solve the cases with them for lack of a better word. Where I am in the series right now, they're pretty much just working on like cold cases so you're not like in active cases with them like in criminal minds you're like with fbi agents trying to solve things but there are definitely some active cases that you get in here and they're all like kind of interconnected and like it connects to the kids traumas it's really well developed it's not like the most groundbreaking thing i've ever read in my entire life like i feel like a lot of the twists especially in this one i guess but the way that they execute it is so fun and it goes so much further than i think it's gonna go and the stories are so interdeveloped and like they're so connected you feel so in this world with them it's such an easy rate if you're flipping the page what it feels like every 10 seconds you're discovering things on every single page and also just like the profiling of it all all of their natural skills is very interesting and very cool to read about it i also was not expecting that we would get like any little bits of romance but i'm feeling now that we are going to get some romance and to everyone who told me to read this at the 19 hour mark thank you so goddamn much because this kept me hooked and i think this is the only reason that i really truly actually made it to the end i was gonna try and finish clear and sync before talking to you guys but then i was like it's i'm gonna say the same things about both because it's the same writing style which the chapters are so short it's just everything about the writing style is so quick and easy to read and just like that that was us reading for 24 hours straight successfully round of applause to me i never ever thought a that i would ever do this when i started making book content i was like there's no world and then i got so many questions for it and then i was like i feel like it's a rite of passage i have to do it and then i failed and i was like okay literally the moment i failed the next morning i called my mom and i was like i have to do it again because i do not quit this was a lot more fun i feel like i was simultaneously so much more delirious in this one because i feel like i didn't sleep at all the night before but i made it really far and i only only had two red bulls hear me out don't drink that much caffeine in a day i'm not recommending it i had my last red bull at like 4 p.m and we made it to two let me know what you guys think about me doing like a reading for 24 hours like setting the alarm how much I actually read if I were reading for 24 hours versus like the 24 hour span I hope you guys enjoyed this chaotic little video. Thank you so much pair for sponsoring I would not have made it through this video without you because there was no world that my eyes were still gonna be focusing anywhere on a page Okay, and if you want to check pair out make sure you use Madison K15 for 15% off I hope you guys have the best day ever and I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye